Hi and welcome to the video. Today I'll be showing you my Super Saison Brew. Uh, this is a slightly different Saison to a normal one. Uh, I'll be using a couple of different types of yeast and I'll also be having uh, honey as a late addition during the fermentation process. Here's the recipe including the mash schedule and everything you need. Don't worry though, this will be also included in the YouTube description. So as you can see here, there is an awful lot of different ingredients that go into this beer. Trust me, it's very worthwhile, very interesting beer uh, for sure. So the reason I'm using a couple of yeasts here is that I really like the Y yeast 3724. The problem is, is it's a pretty unreliable yeast and requires some pretty uh, high temperatures to ferment fully. So I'm going to use it alongside the uh, very reliable French Saison yeast by Mangrove Jacks M29. So the technique that I've found that works best, and you know this is all a, a matter of opinion of course, is that I make a small starter with my first yeast, which in this case is the Y yeast 3724, and then I basically uh, do another starter and combine the two uh, and that's when the M29 French Saison yeast goes in. So what you can see on your screen now is basically two starters put together. And in this photo you can see that we have uh, clear evidence of uh, fermentation within the starters. So all is good. So we'll start off now by adding our grains to our grain basket. Uh, the important thing here of course as always is to add this slowly and stir as you go. So I fast forward now to the end and all of the grain is now in and as you can see it's not a thick consistency, it's not thin. This is about right and this is what you should be looking for. So on goes the mash plate and this will go all the way to the grain to start with and then I just lift it up a little. Um, then after that I'm just going to obviously put the, uh, the rest of the usual equipment on. And then after that, I'm adding an aftermarket sink strainer, which I bought from eBay very, very cheaply. And this stops grain going through the wart pipe uh, and into your wart outside of the uh, grain basket. So here is the mash schedule, and here we have a balance between high fermentability and residual sugars, and then obviously 10 minutes for mash out to help that sparge along its way. So at the start of this brew what I did was I took my uh, yeast which had been uh, uh, cold crashing in my fridge overnight and I decanted it down to this small amount here. And what I'm doing is throughout the brew I'm just giving it a nice shake like this just to help it uh, along its way. So while the mash is taking place I actually take the time to actually set out all of my ingredients in order. Uh, for some reason I've done them in reverse today, but uh, never mind, we know where we are. So here's a closer look at uh, all of those different uh, types of ingredients in this, couple of different types of candy sugar, different uh, hops, uh, some seeds of paradise are in there, coriander, there's a couple of different types of uh, orange peel. So yeah, this is a really uh, interesting beer for sure. Quick look at the sink strainer here, you can see it's collected a nice amount of grain on top. Very nice. So now the sparge begins and uh, the important thing with this, uh, as I always say, is really slow it down. Get that efficiency up. This is one of the ways you can do that. I would highly recommend that you add the water in one litre batches at one time and you do it as uh, evenly as you possibly can across the mash plate. Once that's in, let most of it drain down into the system before you add any more. Do not forget the sides as well, this is very important. Today's brewing music is Pantera, just in case you were wondering, and I'm listening to the Reinventing Hell album. Very, very nice. So here's my usual flipping the grain basket into a bag trick, and uh, this is such an easy way of doing it, and I've got it in a little container there with a nice handle ready to take away. So here we are now at the boil, and just to prove to some of you that I don't have to use a spray bottle to control it, here I am using just my mash paddle. <laughs> so for those of you that aren't aware, what we see here at the top here, this foam, this is basically just protein. 
and it's important that we stir this back into the war. Um, not just now, uh, this is when you're going to see most of it, but actually during the entire boil. So now on the top of our wort is uh, nice and clear, it's time to put the first uh, hop addition in, which is at 60 minutes, just a 60 minute boil in this one, so it follows straight afterwards. It's important to give this a nice stir. The only thing that we're interested in with our hops uh, is actually the oil. So um, as we know, oil and water usually likes to be at the top. Important to stir it all in. So I've had a number of you ask for a quick uh, look around my uh, beer storage area. So um, here we are. Um, just a buzz round here. You're going to recognize an awful lot of this. Uh, some of this is brewed at work, so you may not have seen the brewing video for it, but uh, ah, certainly there's a, a nice selection of different beers here. Um, something to drink over the weekend, of course. If there's anything that you see here that uh, you're not familiar with, then uh, I'm more than happy to pass on recipes. Um, yeah, I think uh, sharing is caring. So now we're going below the area where I can actually see what the camera's doing, so I do apologise for the quality of the footage here, but I'm sure you get the general idea. So it doesn't actually end there, I also make wine as well. Uh, that one you just saw there was uh, from Fruit from the Garden, various different wines here on the rack, and uh, there's my stout keg. So there you have it, now you've seen it all. So now it's time to get the grains of paradise and the coriander and basically put them together and give them a good crushing before I actually put them into the boil. So a bit more preparation now as we're going into the boil. I'm actually getting the candy sugar ready. I've given it a bit of a crushing just to make it uh, a little bit more uh, manageable in the boil so that it actually uh, liquidizes quicker and uh, it's actually quite unusual to be using a couple of different types but as I said at the start of the video this is a super saison it's a little bit different so now it's time to put this directly into my uh, kettle and uh, give it a nice good stir up uh, and make sure that if there are any little bits at the bottom that I give them a stir at the same time so it's now zero minutes and I've uh, added the counterflow chiller. I'm just going to run the boiling hot walk through it for a couple of minutes before moving on to the chilling process itself. So once that's done, on go the taps, the chilling process starts. So the wort is now at an acceptable temperature for my yeast, so I've rigged everything up, including my uh, ceiling harness, just so that uh, I don't have to hold that wart pipe up high. Uh, and as you can see from the video here, I'm getting a nice amount of oxygen into that wall. Very, very important for yeast health. Speaking of yeast, this obviously needs another little shake up just to help it along its way, so I'm doing that now. And then once you have a reasonable amount of wall into your fermenter, it's then time to add the yeast. Uh, I'm not going to stop this, I'm just literally going to pour it straight through the funnel, works a treat. And then I'm just going to uh, fill the flask a little bit with a bit more wort just to see if I can get a little bit more of that uh, yeast out uh, that might be clinging onto the bottom. There you go. So now it's a case of just waiting for the pump to push the west of the uh, wort uh, into this container here. I did end up with 15 litres, bang on target, so I was very, very happy with that. I was a little bit over the, my uh, predicted uh, efficiency on this brew and uh, of course this reading is before the honey goes in. Oh well, never mind. So we're now done and uh, I've set the temperature controller here to 25 degrees C and uh, while I was actually cleaning the grain father after the brew uh, I started to notice that we had a nice little fermentation starting so that was good news as well. And then within a couple of short hours, uh, this was the scene. Yeah, got a nice crossen formed right on the top there. Very, very nice. 
So it's now a day later and we definitely have high fermentation within our super saison. It's now time to add the honey. So what I did earlier was I pre-boiled some water. I've allowed that to cool down now. And I've just got my uh, various bits and pieces here all uh, going sanitizer. And I've got that pre-boiled water on a very gentle heat. I've got my thermometer probe inside the water now just to make sure that I don't go above about 60 degrees C. I don't want to pasteurize this and I certainly don't want to boil it because that will kill all of the flavors. All I'm looking to do now really is just uh, allow that honey to dissolve within this water solution. I'm then going to add it directly to the wort. So while this was dissolving I've given it a really nice stir up. Um, just to make sure that it's all mixed together nicely within the water and uh, yeah all is good. So I've now got it in a small sink which actually has an overflow so basically by having the tap running all of the time I get this cooled down a lot faster and as you can see I've got the temperature probe in there and I'm keeping an eye on it. I want this to be 25 degrees C before adding it. So now both my beer and the uh, honey are both about the same temperature, it's now time to add it. So I've pulled out my trusty funnel and it goes straight into the container uh, with the water already in it. Despite the extra headspace that I have in this container, this was the scene very very soon afterwards. It was very much like adding paraffin to fire. So here's a mock-up of what I think I'm going to use as a label for this one. This is on a 4-up sheet. I, I rather like it. I think it gives the uh, imagery of a nice farmhouse ale. Uh, do let me know what you think. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly had a lot of fun during the brew and also making this video for you. So if you did like the video, then please do like it on YouTube if you are uh, having an account. Uh, it really helps me out, so uh, if you could, that would be great. I am making these videos very regularly, so if you'd like to know as soon as I have a new video, then please do subscribe. I'd like to uh, thank everyone for their nice comments and enthusiasm around my videos. It really makes it so worthwhile. So, thanks very much to all of you for watching, and until next time, happy brewing!